Um, so I will introduce you to Megan Ryan. She will be presenting Lending a Helping Hand, Educational Value of a Hand-Drawn Video Tutorial on Embryonic Underpinnings of Gross Anatomy. And uh, this presentation was accepted for as a poster award finalist at AAA Experimental Biology. Take it away, Thanks Meg. Thanks so much, Corey. Um, and thanks for everyone for joining us today. Uh, we all really appreciate it. If you'd like to send me any additional questions or comments after the presentation, my email will be on every slide. So before I get started, I'd just like to acknowledge and thank the people on this slide here, especially my mentor, Dr. Lee, for giving me this opportunity and helping me to make it happen. So embryology is a really difficult subject for students to learn, as we all know. Uh, due to spatial and temporal dimensionalities, it can be really hard for students to visualize some of the topics. And embryology is often offered in an integrated curriculum, which means the students have limited contact hours. However, it's been shown that short video tutorials can be an effective learning resource for embryology, especially when paired with other tools, such as drawing, to help the students follow along. So our aim was to investigate the educational value of incorporating a hand-drawn embryology video tutorial in an integrated gross anatomy course within a medical curriculum. And we thought that given this video that students would demonstrate a higher level of learning and satisfaction within this curriculum. So this is just a little short 10 second clip of the video that I made for them. It was on musculoskeletal development, more specifically on the innervation to hypomeric and epimeric muscle groups. The somites will further differentiate into three different structures. Most medial within the embryo is the square tome. So as you can see from this little clip, um, every time I introduced a new term, I would draw it out for the students. And then I would also label it so that if they wanted to draw along or follow along, um, they could do that a little bit easier. We recruited 184 first year medical students in an integrated gross anatomy course at CU. We did all of this flipped classroom style, which means they were able to dictate a lot of their um, learning throughout this process. So we gave them the video tutorial and they were able to watch it as many times as they wanted from home. They could control the playback speed, they could rewind it, they could fast forward, um, anything they wanted to do pretty much. And then we also gave them a pre-lecture quiz to take from home as many times as they wanted as well. It was seven multiple choice question items. We then had the lecture, which include a pre-lecture quiz review, a clinical case and some problem solving for them. Um, and we also allowed them to ask questions during this time about the video and what they saw. And two days later, we had an active learning review session, which include a included a post-lecture quiz with 10 multiple choice question items and a survey which had eight Likert scale items and two open-ended items, which allowed them to comment on what they liked and what they didn't like. We then did the statistical analysis included in this box here. Um, I will mention with the pre-lecture quiz, uh, they were allowed to take that as many times as they wanted but we were only analyzing that very first submission. So we analyzed the quiz results using sigma restricted parameterization, the survey data using one-way ANOVA, and survey comments were grouped using thematic analysis. A total of 180 students completed the pre-lecture quiz, 165 completed the post-lecture quiz, and 144 opted to complete that survey. Um, we were really happy with that very first uh, pre-lecture quiz score average. It was sitting at a, right around 84%, which uh, to us showed a really good understanding of the video that they were given. Then they had the lecture and two days later, the post-lecture quiz. So unfortunately, the post-lecture quiz was, uh, the average was significantly lower than the pre-lecture quiz. Um, however, the effect size was 0.22. Um, the quiz score average was right around 65%, and there's a lot of different reasons this could have been, um, probably because there, were, were, there was a little bit more pressure with the post-lecture quiz. They couldn't take it as many times as they wanted, and they were in a classroom setting. We also made this quiz uh, just slightly more challenging, um, just because it's still, you know, they're trying to learn and we're trying to help them retain this information. So even though the quiz score average decreased, the students still perceived the video to be um, highly 
effective with their learning. So we had eight Likert scale items on that survey and it was rated one to five, one being strongly disagree, five being strongly agree. And they rated pretty much everything high. They thought the video was helpful. The video pacing was pretty high. Um, they found the drawings within the video to be helpful. They were likely to recommend it to other students. And we also asked what they thought of the quizzes and overall they thought the quizzes were helpful in testing their knowledge. However, the video pacing was significantly rated lower than all the other categories and 47 students further commented that the video was too fast for them. So overall, the video tutorial was perceived to be highly effective for learning and review before and after the lecture. 60, 60 students additionally commented that the real-time hand drawings within the video were additionally helpful to them. Um, one student commented that the fact that it was real-time drawing helped me understand the process, and we got lots of comments like this. Um, once again, though, the, uh, the pacing overall, they thought it could be a little bit slower for them. So I think a lot of educators can relate to this, but there was a lot of polarities in survey comments, meaning what some students like, others, other students didn't like about the video. Um, for hand-drawn diagrams, for instance, a lot of students said the drawings really helped, the diagrams were great, um, but then some students preferred actual photos, diagrams to accompany drawings. And the same thing with video pacing, there was actually about 25 students who had additionally commented in the open-ended items that they actually really liked the pace, um, and they could modify the playback speed if they wanted, um, but once again, some students thought it could be slower. So overall, the students did not perform better on the post-lecture quiz, um, which is against what we were expecting. However, like I mentioned, there could be a lot of reasons for that. There was a bit more pressure on the students for the post-lecture quiz, and we wanted to kind of challenge them with that so that they could better retain this knowledge for their test. Um, and students highly rated the tutorial, especially as an overview tool in addition to their lecture and their te textbooks and other materials they had. And there were some limitations with our study. Um, as I mentioned, there were more difficult items in the post-lecture quiz. The quizzes were fairly similar, but once again, we wanted to kind of challenge them. And there were different quiz taking environments and trials and time restrictions. So the pre-lecture quiz, there were no time restrictions whatsoever. The post-lecture quiz, we tried to give them as long as they needed, but it ended up being roughly 10 minutes. Are there any questions? Great, thank you, Meg. If there are any questions, please submit them via chat box. Um, the one question we received is the difference between average decrease in scores and high student ratings of the resources um, is interesting. Are there any additional insights for why this difference exists or just limitations or plans for future research? Yeah, for sure. So we, I, I was a TA at the time, so we were really concerned with the students learning over, you know, the research that we were receiving from this. Um, so the post-lecture quiz was done, was given to them within a four-hour active le learning review session. And I know near the end of that learning review session, students were pretty tired. They'd been reviewing their gross anatomy um, material for quite some time. So I think that could have definitely been a limitation. I think in the future, if this study were to be performed um, more for the research than, you know, for the students uh, learning review, I think there would definitely be more similar quiz taking environments because I think just that fatigue from, from the learning from the day could have affected them. Thank you, Meg. Um, one more question is, um, were either of the pre or post quiz open book? And if yes, could this have skewed the scores? The pre-lecture quiz technically could have been open book. I mean, they, so they were allowed to take that from home, so we couldn't really control any materials that they had at their disposal. Um, and as well, they had that video that they could open as many times as they wanted. So they could have had that on the side when they were taking the pre-lecture quiz. Um, but they were told that that pre-lecture quiz, you know, that's for their learning and to test their knowledge. And I think um, with the scores that we got on the first submission, I think most students were taking it very seriously. 
Okay, great. I think that's all the time we have at this time. So thank you so much again, Meg. Um, and we'll move on to the next presenter.